Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. We're in the thick of the breeding season. We're wrapping up bow on python breeding, starting to get eggs, going to have babies pretty soon, and really breeding the heck out of corn snakes and king snakes and all the colubrids. We're going to spend some time talking about it. You're watching Snake Bites. When breeding snakes, it's more about procedure and diligence than it is really about knowledge. Don't get me wrong, the knowledge is really important, but it's really about the work ethic you have. For instance, with ball pythons, we set up groups that are one male to every two to four females, which means every day that male needs to get switched into a new female's cage unless I'm giving them a rest or I'm feeding them. As long as you go through that diligence and continue to work that process for however many months it takes, you'll have as much success breeding as even the best breed out there. So the point of switching these males into these females cages is in hopes to get breeding or lockups. That gives you the best chance of getting eggs obviously. Now every time you put a male in you're not going to get a lockup but you're certainly going to see at least six to ten lockups per season per female in order to have a successful breeding season. Of course, the fruits of all our labor are working so hard at trying to get these guys to breed is to either get babies or, in this case, eggs. This is actually a clutch of ball pythons. This is a het for caramel albino bred to a caramel pinstripe, so we could get some caramel pinstripes. As you can see, she's on a clutch of eggs, and she's a little bit defensive, so you have to be careful because this will be a time that you can get bit. All you want to do is basically hold down her back tail without getting bit, of course. Try to get her going. I hold down her back tail and I kind of just unravel her around the eggs. Just kind of pull her off, set her aside. As you can see, there's actually five good eggs here in one slug. This is what a slug looks like, but these five eggs look perfect. And what's neat is I don't even have to tear these apart because they're laying really good. What I'll do is I'll just lay them right in this hatch right, just like they are. And what I do is I make sure to mark what they are on the, the, the egg and what the date is that they were laid and that way I know when they're going to hatch and what I can expect from this clutch and of course I put them down in an egg data book too but it's always great to get a clutch of eggs. Just like in the python room, the colubrid room is even more important to be diligent and to make sure you get yourself organized. We breed one male to every three females in here because we have a lot of females that need to get bred and if we push them too far we might get some infertility which we never want. So basically what we do in the beginning of the year is set up all of our groups and then what I do is I take the male tags which travels along with each and every male so I always know where he is and what I'll do is I'll actually paint marker you can see this silver paint on this guy right here that's basically just so that I can identify the male really quick I can easily tail sex this animal but when you have thousands of animals to go through you want to do it as quick as you possibly can he goes with his tag into the next female and that's going to happen every single day until I either get gravid animals or when I put them back to give them a day off for feeding which happens twice a week in this room. As you can see these guys are, have their tails intertwined and the male is actually the longer tail here that's pointing out to the front of the, the rubber maid and he's actually going to sit there. Now this breeding can go on for maybe an hour or it could go on for five minutes but the fact of the matter is is colubrids get the job done a lot quicker than boas and pythons. Even though breeding snakes is an awesome job and something I love to do the fact is is that it's the daily work in those systems and the diligence to stick to those systems that really matters in your outcome. If you're willing to put in that work, good things are bound to happen. This is Allie with More for the Week, and today here I have a Peter Blast. And what's cool about them is they have three different morphs in them, a cinnamon, a pastel, and a pinstripe. Make sure you tune in next week for Allie's More for the Week. We talked a lot about single breeding animals and putting one male in with one female and continuing switching through. The fact is is that we actually do group breed some animals from time to time, like these Colombian rainbows. We do the same with Brazilians. We'll keep up to two males and four females in a cage, continually switching them out every now and then and giving them rest. The biggest thing is when you have this many animals in a cage, you gotta spot clean them and keep them clean. And I tell you what, with these guys that can sometimes be a challenge, I think we're gonna watch Chewy do it. So it's my responsibility as a proper herpetologist to clean, feed, and breed these animals. So, I will show you how it's done. Carefully go through the animal's bedding looking for all waste management. This is called waste management, ladies and gentlemen. Try not to disturb the groups as they might be hooking up. 
Okay, I'm carefully going to sift through this breeding group to find waste management. Here I go. Woo! One or two bites is okay. If you're a proper herpetologist, you can go through this. Woo! Ah, whoa. Woo! Okay, if you're a proper breeder like me, do not, and I repeat, do not let mean animals get you down. It's all part of the job. We properly fill their water dish, and then I like to put the hose on mist, and give them an erotic shower to start the breeding process. This is the most important part of the breeding season. Hey, ladies and gentlemen. As a proper herpetologist, I do get bit sometimes, but I don't let that discourage me. Life will go on. Thank you. On this week's Comment of the Week on the Snake Bites with Fashion Sense episode, the question was, what summer movies are you excited to see? And Polyophonic said, I can't wait to see Inception. Oh my gosh, Christopher Nolan's movie looks totally off the his zookie. LOL, 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 for real, LOL, LOL. The earth turns sideways, LOL, LOL. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I'm really excited to see that, but I gotta be honest, your comment really did disturb me. Until next time, you guys keep sending me creative comments. I'm gonna feature you on a future episode. All right, guys, it's Cal's Question of the Week. Now, this episode was all about breeding. I wanna know from you guys, if you could breed anything in the world, what would it be? Give me some kind of crazy combinations. Anything goes. Text your video comment below. Let me know. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. There's no doubt that breeding season and hatching season are my favorite times of the year. We work so hard and it's so awesome to start getting eggs and just know that babies are just right around the corner. Another thing I'm going to be super excited about is as you guys are watching this show, I'm going to be 4,000 miles away down under in Australia having a great time at the Frog and Reptile Expo down in Sydney. There'll be no doubt we're going to be filming like mad down there and that's what next week's show is going to be about. Until next time, you've been watching Snake Bites. Thanks.